Take me out to the ball game. Take me. Oh, there you are. Hey, AV Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here. We're going to be taking a look at our example number six. We are going to be going out to the ball game. We're going to look at a problem that uses vector valued functions in an applied setting that will determine whether or not a batted baseball will be a home run or not. I know you're all dying to know, so let's go ahead and take a look at our example number six. So before we start, I want to remind you of some things that are going to pertain to problems such as these. And the reminder here is at the top of the notes that it says, remember that when an object is subjected to gravity, and that's what is going to happen when we talk about free falling objects on a planetary surface, its position that we'll call S that's measured from the ground is going to be given by our friend s of t is negative 16 t squared plus v o t plus s o right where v o was the initial velocity and s o was the initial position height from the ground and of course negative 16 is half of that gravitational constant when you're dealing with feet now with that in mind we can still solve vector motion problems much the same way uh, we just have to tweak them ever so lightly. So let's take a look at our example six. It is calculator active. A baseball is hit four feet above the ground and it leaves the bat at a speed of 104 feet per second at an angle of 40 degrees to the ground. So four feet above the ground makes sense. It's the batter's, you know, uh, it's probably like a high ball, right? Uh, um, up, up, up on them. And, and, and uh, we have this bat speed of 105 feet per second. And we just know that the angle that the ball is going to make is a 40 degree angle. So all of that information can be very uh, helpful to figure out many things like how high the ball is going to go, how far it's going to go. Will it be a certain height when it reaches the outfield fence? Those are coming up. Now in part A, we asked to write a vector that describes the situation. And so we're going to use our typical approach of vectors. And I'll use the R of T notation. And what we're going to have is an X component and a Y component, just as if you're going to set this up parametrically. Now, the X component is going to consist of a couple of pieces here, three altogether, really. You're going to have the initial velocity, that 105, and you're going to have the T and the cosine of the angle all multiplied together. And that's going to be multiplied by your i. So this is going to be your x component. It's, it's almost as if we're using this piece only of the vertical position uh, part. And that's a really good way to think about it. The x component is just going to be your initial velocity times t and then the cosine of the angle. Now, your i component is finished. We're going to move on to the J component. And the J component is going to consist of this expression here. So we've got this negative 16 T squared. We've got this plus 4. But the VOT in that portion is going to consist of the 105 T times the sine of the angle measure. So we just have to, like I said, tweak this a little bit. It doesn't matter uh, what order you write these in. I'll just go ahead and present it in the order that we see up there. And it would look, again, something like this. And that would be your vector. Again, what's a little different about these problems is the fact that you have gravity basically affecting your J vector. And the gravity is going to throw in this term and this term. If you think back a little bit to when we had um, problems that dealt with vectors with an airplane and a wind, we, we only used components that may have looked like this. Now, I know that we didn't have the T in there, but part of the reason for that is that the time is kind of unknown here with with this speed of 105 feet per second if we multiply that by some time seconds the seconds would cancel and then we have that force thing uh, or not I'm sorry that that distance 
uh, that we can think of as the, the magnitude of our vector that can multiply by our cosine or multiply by our sine depending on which component. So that is really the one thing that's a little different whenever you have application problems that deal with gravity. Now if we take a look at part B, it says determine how high the ball goes. Well, you're actually going to use a little bit of calculus in this problem. And we're going to use the same idea that we did before in that how high is very dependent upon this vertical component, which I'm going to call the y component. And we would take the derivative of the y component. And I would just call that y prime of t. right? Just like you would find the maximum of a function, you're going to take the derivative of that function. You're going to do the same thing here. So when we take this derivative, we get negative 32t plus 105 times the sine of 40 is going to be a constant because the t sort of disappears on us there. And then, of course, the derivative of 4 is going to disappear as well. And now we have our derivative that we would set equal to 0 to find a critical value. And you can probably see what's about to happen here, I think. If this whole expression was set equal to 0, you would have subtracted over the 105 sine of 40 degrees and then divided by the negative 32. Well, there's going to be a pair of negatives that will end up canceling. And you actually have 105 times the sine of 40 degrees all divided by 32. All right. Now, at this point, we probably would want to use the calculator to get a decimal approximation for this. And I'm not going to break the calculator out because these uh, calculations are fairly state straightforward. You just have to make sure that you are in degree mode to uh, apply this sine of 40 degrees. If all goes well, and I do invite you to type that into your calculator, you should get 2.109 seconds. So what that is basically saying is in two seconds, the ball reaches about that point. Didn't take long, did it? <laughs> now we have to figure out how high the, the ball actually goes, which means we would go back to our Y component and we would plug in this 2.109. And so that Y component, if you remember, was the negative 16 and then 2.109 squared. You're going to add the 105 sine of 40 degrees. Oops, 105 times t. Very common mistake, by the way. 105 times t times the sine of 40 degrees. And then don't forget to add your 4 at the end. All right. Some students might think uh, when you do these problems that it could be helpful to uh, define this function into your calculator and even define this one as two separate things, x of t and y of t, and then you can retrieve them a lot easier. In any event, if this is entered into your calculator correctly, you should get about 75.176 feet. And according to this, that's about right, 75.176 feet is about as high as that ball is going to go in the air. Part C, this is where things get kind of exciting. There's a 12 feet fence, 325 feet from home plate. That would be this guy right here at 325 feet. We have to address the fact, is this ball on its current path going to clear that fence? In other words, do we have a home run? And so I want you to think about this just for a second. And this would be a really good exercise for you. I'm even going to give you a chance to pause the video and just think about 10, 15 seconds here. What is it that you would want to know about this function and maybe that function to determine whether or not that ball will clear that fence 325 feet away from home plate and 11 feet high? Pause the video and think about that for a second. All right, hopefully you had a chance to think about that. And what I was hoping that you would have done is understand that the x component of your vector has to be 325. Actually, it has to be bigger than or equal to 325. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out exactly what time 
the ball is going to be 325 feet away from the fence. And so in order to solve that, we could just simply set this 105 t cosine of 40 degrees equal to 325. And if I solve for t, 325 remains on top, and we have this 105 cosine of 40 degrees on the bottom. Now again, we probably would rather work with that as a decimal value. And I can tell you that the decimal is 4.040 seconds. So that is the time it's going to take for that ball to get to that fence. The question is now, is that ball high enough to clear the fence? And so at this point, you can return to your y equation, enter that 4.040, and of course, we, we know that this is what we would be entering in the calculator, which I think gives you a very good motivation to have perhaps stored this y of t function, even more so than the x of t. The y of t being stored in your calculator will save time. TI-84 people put it in your Y1 or Y2 menu. TI-Inspire people use your colon equal. And so if this is all typed in very carefully, making sure you're still using the degree symbol and whatnot, you end up with a value of approximately 15.491. Now, what that means is that this ball, when the x is 325, has a y that's about 15 and a half, which is about four and a half feet higher than that fence. So this would be a home run. Uh, unless, of course, the outfielder can jump 15 feet high and catch it, which that brings up a whole different ball game altogether. So we're going to say, yes, we have a home run. And we win the game. Hopefully this helps a little bit. Uh, we have a couple of more applications. They're not all sports related uh, that uh, you might find a little bit more interesting than this if you're not so much into the sports idea. But we've got uh, a couple of good ones for you. We hope you check them out and we'll see you at the next video. Thanks for joining.